this is Jeff Edwards, Edwards Funeral Services in Columbus, Ohio. And he's going to give us a tour of a cremation unit. This is our American um, A200 Trilogy uh, flame-based crematory, or retort, if you will. Um, it's basically a stainless steel exterior um, big stove, if you will. The door is facing the interior. And, and, and the cremation process. There's safeties to keep the door from falling down. It's just a concrete chamber with brick. And then there is an exhaust in the back. You can see where the um, emissions from cremation are exhausted out the back, down. Then they come all the way back to the front underneath this chamber and across and then all the way back that's called the after uh, burner chamber and then it's exhausted out the stack. Now when you say exhausted out um, there are limits about emissions for There are retort. limits about emissions and this underneath after burner chamber is designed to uh, reburn the pollution so that when it does you know, go out the stack on top of the building, mm -hmm. it's invisible to the naked eye. Okay. Um, the particulates are still there. It's just, you know, it's, it's burned off the carbon. It's invisible to the naked eye. And it meets with the EPA's approval at that point. Mm -hmm. That's the purpose of, you know, mm -hmm. reburning the smoke, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, full of safety. The door comes down. It's computer controlled. It, is manu it can be manually operated. Um, it has thresholds and set point temperatures. Um, the cremation process itself ideally runs at 1,550 degrees. The chamber underneath set point at 1,650 degrees. And then, of course, these are just timers to control when I want certain fans to come on to add air to different parts of the process mm -hmm. um, for efficiencies. Well, right, you said that this is about the most energy efficient model you could get. Yeah, this is the most energy efficient, you know, crematory model that I could find, and I researched mm -hmm. them all, mm -hmm. as well as the alkaline hydrolysis equipment. This has um, throat and uh, hearth air potentiometers, which allow me to minutely control the amount of air or oxygen that I want in each chamber. The um, but the benefit there is much like if you set your kitchen on fire and open up the windows, now you've got the whole house on fire. Oxygen or air, you know, makes fire burn as quickly as adding gasoline to it. Um, and of course, we don't pay for air, so mm -hmm. this saves a, a, a significant amount of money over other crematory equipment that had on and off switches for air. Mm -hmm. um, about how much natural gas do you burn for one cremation, one average cremation? Do you know? It varies by the size of the body. Okay. The smaller the body, the more the uh, gas. Really? The larger the body, the less I'm noticing that I use because uh, larger bodies are adipose tissue. Adipose is, you know, it's, it's, it's fat, is grease. Mm -hmm. And if you ever had a grease fire in your kitchen, once that grease catches, poof, you know, and it's, it's, it's fuel. Mm -hmm. So I'm noticing that larger cases cremate um, less expensively than the smaller cases. Wow. The most expensive that I've noticed, we do read our gas meter between every single cremation, so I know the, mm -hmm. the CCFs that we're using. Um, this particular piece of equipment is using an average of 10 to $15 in gas, but gas is a different price in different parts of the country. Markets, yeah. Here in Columbus, Ohio, it's, it's relatively inexpensive. Um, so that's that's just an average that we're seeing, about 10 to $12, maybe as high as 15 on the really small 80, 90 pound bodies. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, of course, it complies with you know state requirements for tracking of the temperature of the chambers so that they can mm -hmm. track how many bodies have been cremated and when. Um, the One of the nice benefits of this particular um, Crematory is the Trilogy Eclipse Flame Management System, which if there's an error, it'll tell me the error code and what caused the system to error out and how to go about fixing that. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't have to have a problem and then 
call the manufacturer and wait for them to send a tech out, I can say, we've got an error code, you know, 14, what does that mean? And they can say, oh, that means this, do this, and you'll be all right. Or now we need to send in a tech and, you know, fix it. We mm -hmm. haven't had that problem, but it, it gives you, it gives us more control and uh, it's just an easier management function. Mm -hmm. Does anybody ever want to watch the start of a cremation? Do you allow that? We do allow it. Um, one out of a hundred, I've found, that mm -hmm. will want to see it. Mm -hmm. um, most don't want to watch the actual cremation. Mm -hmm. They just want that confirmation that, you know, identification is, um, you know, is, is assured. Mm -hmm. They've seen or heard the cremation horror stories, and mm -hmm. there's been two or three around the country with mix-ups and identification issues. Um, that's really the overriding concern that I've found my families mm -hmm. to want to um, to witness or at least make sure that you mm -hmm. know we're following the, the, the set protocols that we have. Do you use a metal tag system that goes with the body? Yeah, everybody okay. who comes in gets a tag as soon as they come in to um, to identify them, and that stays with them, mm -hmm. as well as our, you know, identification paperwork. We have our own set of internal checks and balances and procedures to verify identification and make sure that we don't do a cremation um, before we have absolutely all the paperwork and the permit in place. Mm -hmm. Our checklist that we have internally requires information from the permit, so we couldn't cremate before we had a permit. Um, we are required, internal policies of course, to um, do photo, photo of the deceased identification tag to make sure that the, um, the body bag or the, the ankle bracelet or the hospital band indeed does match the name on the paperwork and on the, you know, the, the number on the tag so that there's no rush to from the cooler to the crematory where we could have a mix-up and get the wrong uh, person cremated mm -hmm. out of order or, 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 heaven forbid, give the wrong set of ashes back to a family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we've complicated the process a little bit internally for that purpose. Okay. Well, thank you for that overview of flame-based cremation. We'll take a break and go over to the alkaline hydrolysis unit. Great. Thank you. Thank you.